All right, traders, I am back again with another video. And in this video, we want to take a look at the Euro Yen. The Euro Yen on the daily time frame. As you could see, um, you see some lines on my chart. So last week we looked at this pair when it was here and it broke out of this flag pattern. So we took a trade down to this level, all right? And price reached the level we expected it to because this is a support level here that you see at 118.357, right? So then we also noticed that price was in this um, falling wedge right here as you can see this is a falling wedge so a falling wedge pattern is usually um, a bullish pattern once the breakout happens so when you get a breakout it's usually a bullish pattern so what we are looking at here is um, a couple of things because at this support and resistance level price was right at the bottom of the wedge and then also you see as the daily candle closed you got a big rejection candle there that's major there when you see that big rejection candle there a lot of times when you see these candles on the daily time frame close at a support and resistance level they usually are reliable candles to trade so with that rejection that's so showing us that there's some buying pressure and some bulls are entering the market here because you see the bears controlled this all the way down here and now it looks like there's some bulls coming into the market right at the support level all right so we don't want to jump the gun here but the the things that we're looking at is we do have this diag this um falling wedge pattern right and we are at a support and resistance level all right so one thing that is in our way is ichimoku it's not really helping us here because it's just pretty flat but if you looked at ichimoku you would look at this as pretty bearish um you got a TK crossover that's bearish. Your future is bearish. Um, your Chiku span is bearish. And price is below the cloud. So everything is bearish here, right? So why am I going trading to the upside? Well, I'm trading to the upside because, first of all, we're at a support level. All right, so looking at that support level, even if we just get a pullback, but I'm looking at how this market is sideways here. So I don't really pay a lot of attention to Ichimoku when it's a sideways market because you got this support level you got a resistance level when the price was up here everything was bullish with Ichimoku so why didn't the price continue to keep going all right so you can't just rely on the indicator to trade all the time that indicator helps you to decide some things but also you got to understand what the market's doing and along with price action also seeing what price is doing and things like that now what I'm looking at is a close above this level to get us into a trade and a stop loss a little bit below this um, wick here all right because that's a nice rejection on the daily time frame now this pair is a little bit spiky anyway so you got to be careful there all right you can see a lot of spikes on this pair so you got to be careful so what we're going to do we're going to take Ichimoku off of here so we could see the price in itself and see the levels and understand what the market is really doing um, so let's remove it So now when I remove this, you could probably see things a little bit better. All right. So now you really see what's going on with price. You could see how sideways that is. All right. You could see we have a support level here. So let's go to our left, see how good that support level is. Is it a valid level? So I always like to go to my left to see how this level was hit before. And you could see where it was hit there. All right. And let's see. Do we have any other touches down here? This is taking a while to load up, so just hold on for a second. Let's see what we got. We'll try to see if we got another level down here where this could be reliable. My computer taking a little bit of time for me here. All right, but we're not going to go back and wait then. We'll just move on with it. But what I like to do is look to the rear, look to my left and see what I got bouncing on these levels because it shows me that these levels are dependable all right and so now here we go you could see where price is almost bounced on that level let me pull back up here you can see it right there we did bounce on that level pretty much you could see where it was a support level and it was a resistance level and now a support level you want a level where it's going to be a support level and a resistance level and then a support level you want it to be both support and resistance and that kind of leads you to a stronger um, a stronger support and resistance level all right but now we got Ichimoku off the chart we saw the support and resistance level so now we can kind of trust that right it's kind of sideways 
so we want to see what the market's going to do let's go to the four hour time frame because we may be able to get a better opportunity now a trend usually starts and ends with a fractal so we don't have a fractal here yet but this is going to take two candles prior two candles after to make a fractal which could um, be a little bit of distance after that now another thing I like to look at is you look at this Williams percent R this is on the four uh, Williams percent R sit to uh, four four periods all right I'm trading it pretty much like um, Larry Williams traded it himself so we're, we he used the four period um, Williams percent R and what we're looking for is basically a lot of traders try to trade this as if when it's an oversold or overbought level then they look for the reversal well that's not basically what we're going to be looking for we're going to be looking for the momentum so what we want here is this indicator has levels of negative 20 and negative 80 all right so negative 20 most traders would say that was overbought right and then negative 80 most traders would say that was oversold but when we get to these this negative 20 level here that's going to be above this um purple area then that's building up momentum that's when you want to be trading because the market could stay overbought or oversold if if so you call that for as long as who knows okay so when you see that condition that's a a, a momentum strength condition so that's when you see the market has momentum to either the upside or the downside all right so here when it was coming to the downside and it broke this level it still had momentum and it was gone for quite a while so it probably broke on this candle and continued to move or even this candle and continued to move down for some while there all right so we want to catch this trade we want to get into the trade when the market breaks that negative 20. now when i get a a nice big um rejection like this i usually don't rely on much of anything else except the support and resistance level so i'll go off of the support and resistance level and i really won't pay a lot of attention to um any other indicators and then I'll just watch price and let price lead me here so if I'm gonna trade this the way we're gonna trade this is we want to put our stop loss slightly below this level alright and we want to enter above this point here so if you close above this level above the rejection candle high then that's where we want to be into the trade now let's go to the um, four hour time frame look at this okay so the 240 here which is the four hour time frame you could see nice trend to the downside here's where we looked at this because we broke this um, we broke this flag pattern here right and then when we broke that pattern we pulled back to that pattern this is where we got into the trade now the market came back on us but we had a nice stop loss so then the market moved back down a lot of traders got scared and when it went up this high they got out and some of them took even took a loss because they pretty much didn't believe what you see with the market structure now there's some things that we use to determine the market structure and understand if we want to stay in a trade all right so with those things basically as fractals are very important for us to understand that market structure if we want to stay into a trade or get into a trade or whatever or to know which way the market may go so now we have a fractal here and we're looking for this to move to the upside all right so we want to get a close above this level now this is a four hour time frame you can see even on the four hour time frame you have a rejection down here so this is showing a lot of um, a lot of buying pressure in this area now you could see when this went above that negative 20 that's where the move move started for uh, the four hour time frame and it was a nice little move you probably get a nice little pullback and then maybe we get a break above this level again so we'll wait and see we don't want to close below this point though if we close below this point then all bets are off we're gonna probably look for the trade to the downside all right so that's what we're looking at with the euro yen on the daily time frame and the four hour time frame so we broke it down on both time frames you got this falling wedge and now we're looking to see if we can catch a trade back to the upside off of support and resistance all right guys hopefully this helped you guys out um, hopefully it works for us one thing that I always like to tell my traders is um, trees that are slow to grow bear the best fruit guys so just be patient wait on a trade you don't have to jump in as soon as you see something happening because you think you're gonna miss a trade just be patient and you'll catch a trade there's more trades out there than you know all right it's just like fish in the ocean all right so that's it till next time guys have a great one god bless